Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another beautiful day here. We are going over Season Discovery Phase 2. So we're going to be specifically talking about Resto Druid today. Uh, we're going to start out here with just talents first off here. Alrighty, so now to get into your talents, your bread and butter Resto talents are going to be 5 points here into balance to reduce the cast time on Wrath. This reduces your cast time on Wrath from 2 seconds to 1.5 seconds, which is essentially your global cooldown. That's pretty much perfect. You don't want to touch that. That just stays there always. Then you're going to put 5 points here into the improved Mark of the Wild. You're going to put 5 points into Healing Touch, which is going to reduce your Healing Touch by half a second. So it's going to make it uh, 3 seconds total. You're going to put 1 point here into Nature's Focus. This is simply just to uh, get a point into here because we do need an extra point. You're going to put 3 points into Reflection, which allows you to have 50% mana regeneration and while you cast. Uh, you're going to put 1 point here into Insect Swarm, only to get Gift of Nature, uh, which is going to be to get 10% effective healing on all healing spells, so that includes your Wild Growth. You're going to put 5 points here into Tranquil Spirit, which reduces the mana cost of Healing Touch by 10%. And you're going to put Nature of Swiftness here. Now, I would recommend doing this build specifically at the beginning of a new tier when people don't have the best gear, uh, they don't have the best resistances, they're trying to figure things out still. This is a super, super solid uh, healing build and you're not going to do too much damage with it, but you will do pretty good healing with it. Now, as for your runes, these aren't going to change at all. You're going to be rocking Theory of Storm Rage on your chest. You're going to be rocking Wild Growth on your hands. You're going to be using Nourish on your waist. However, this is not super useful. Now, the reason that you don't really want to rock Nourish is because half the time you're going to be running Raid with a Priest. Priests have amazing single target heals. Uh, this is like your panic button. Oh, crap. Uh, I need to heal up my tank super fast or myself or whatever. So if you're doing like PvP, really good solid rune. But I wouldn't really consider it to be super amazing just in terms of kind of like what this is. Um, now for your legs, you don't want to touch it. It's going to be Star Surge. It's great. Now for your feet, you definitely want to go Dream State. Now the reason Dream State is because whenever you get a crit, you get 50% mana regeneration while casting for 8 seconds. And it increases nature damage. So paired with the next builds I'm going to give you here in a second, this is extremely, extremely useful. Because uh, it's going to be actually more sustainable. Because the entire point of this build is to just spam wild growth off of cooldown whenever you need to. And not run out of mana in 10 seconds, right? It really, really helps. Uh, especially for that, alright? Now the next one here is called Restokin. It's not really as efficient healing-wise as the first one was. However, it does do much more damage. And especially later on, you're going to be needing to heal a little bit less because people have more resistances, people have better gear, they have more stamina, armor, etc. So you don't have to freak out so much. And you can kind of hard cast some more damaging abilities a little bit better. So you're going to start out here with just your Wrath. That's going to stay the same here. You're going to put 5 points into Improved Moonfire, so that increases damage and crit chance, so that's nice. You're going to go into Vengeance here, which is going to be um, Critical Strike damage bonus by 100% for Starfire, Moonfire, and Wrath, which is excellent. You're going to put 1 point here just into Improved Starfire. It's going to reduce the cast time by Starfire by 1 second. And then you're going to go ahead and get Nature's Grace. Now, Nature's Grace is amazing because it actually reduces the casting time of your next spell by 0.5 seconds. All right. This is really, really nice. It's not good to use it right after Wrath because your Wrath is already on your global cooldown. So you'll be actually waiting half of a second to be able to cast your next Wrath if you do it this way. However, if you do it on Starfire, uh, you have a 3.5 second cast on it. So that knocks it down to three seconds. So that's 2.9 seconds. So it's a little bit more manageable. Then you have your Moon Glow. So it reduces the mana cost of Moonfire, Starfire. Wrath is free already. Healing Touch regrowth and rejuve so that's also kind of nice there nine percent that gives you a little bit more sustainability especially when you're putting out more damage you can actually kind of sustain that a little bit and then you're going to put one point here into your increases damage with starfire moonfire and wrath by two percent now i wouldn't really recommend this however it is nice to have this the only reason that we're not putting more points here into uh, moon fury and improved starfire is because we're doing an improved mark of the wild 
Now, if your raid does not have a boomy with it, even though it definitely, definitely should, and you are healing, you should definitely be rocking this one here. So this is essentially, you're just healing as a boomkin, all right? Uh, you still have your five points here to improve wrath, your five points into moonfire. Uh, three, two, five, five here, actually. Now, the reason that you do five here is because you are going to be having 2.5 second casts on your Starfire instead of 2.9 seconds on a proc from Nature's Grace. So that's nice. You do not really have the sustain from Moonglow and you have your extra 10% of damage done for this. Now, you can swap out if there's no Boomy. Just take out one point here from Starfire, put into Boomy. Uh, that just gives everyone a 3% spell crit increase, so that's really, really nice. Um, but you keep it like this if there is a boomy, all right? So to keep this really, really simple, this you only want to use at the end of a phase because you're going to be doing, you know, 170, 200 DPS, and you're going to be not healing as much. However, you're just going to be spot healing the raid with your wild growth. It's pretty much the exact same thing, uh, but you have that. Now, we're going to talk very briefly here just about gear and uh, kind of like what's your pre-biz to get into the raid and what you should be going for statistically. All right, so let's get into it here. So if you look here at RFK, Razorfin Crawl, we're going to start out with that. Uh, the only piece that you really need here is going to go ahead and be the Batwing Mantle. However, that is going to be more or less the same as your SFK Mantle from uh, Wolfmaster Nandos. Pretty much the same thing, not super needed. Uh, you definitely want to be focusing on intellect more so than holy power as a note, as uh, you're going to get the majority from that, all right? Now, next from Graveyard, you don't really need anything from here. Um, you know, this helmet is pretty good. Uh, they upgraded it a little bit here. If you look, they changed the stats on it. Um, that's pretty good unless you have the helmet from uh, the uh, BFD raid. So just keep that in mind. Now, in terms of uh, this next rare, there's not really anything that, that comes under him. Uh, you could use this necklace technically if you don't have anything better. It's not amazing, but the extra little five helps. Um, from Thalnos, again, if you don't have any good shoulders, you can pick these up if you didn't go to RFK. Um, this isn't really useful because you're going to be mainly using a staff. So, you know, you don't need that offhand. Uh, from the library, um, you're going to have the Illusionary Wand, which is really, really good. Uh, you definitely want that intellect. Um, it really helps, as I said before. Um, in terms of Mantle of Dome and Robe of Dome, you don't need them. They're just, you know, it's stamina and fire. So, you know, the other one from the graveyard is much, much better. Uh, in terms of armory, there's nothing from the armory at all that drops. In terms of cathedral, you definitely need to get your uh, white mains hat and your tribune amulet. Those are definitely best in slot before you get into raid here. Now moving on to razor fen downs. So you do not want the uh, silky spider cape. It sounds good at first, but it's really not that good. Um, I would just go ahead and get a BOE, um, you know, int spirit. That's going to make it way, way better for you. Just get straight up intellect. In terms of the rest of the gear, so from Mordresh, you definitely want to get the Death Mage Sash because it's 15 intellect plus healing. You don't need anything else from this dungeon. That's pretty much it. In terms of Uldaman, you are going to go there. There is two pieces that you can use from here. One is from Revelosh, which is the first boss, and you're going to get his hands because you get 12 intellect from the hands there. And the next one is just the second boss. It's Irenea, and you get uh, this one right here, which is another the 15 intellect plus your healing spells now if you can go back to bfd you definitely should be getting at least your two set here or even one set right i'm right now rocking the chest i did get the legs and the boots from nomer last night so i replaced out my stone weavers yesterday here from iron Aya yesterday and i also replaced out here my uh, bfd piece it's not really the best this is much much better it's also set in terms of your bracers just get something high intellect it doesn't have to be like 10 12 intellect you can just get the eight and then just throw uh, uh, on something else as an enchant and then in terms of your pearl You'd want to run BFD. Everyone has a pearl nowadays, so just go there and get the 20 uh, spell effect on it. That's useful. And for your rings, just get the intellect spirit ones. They're like two, three gold in the auction house right now, and you should be good to go. In terms of... Alrighty, so you're going to go ahead and precast Starfire on the boss. You're then going to use Star Search when it's pulled. If the tank needs to be healed or if there's raid-wide mechanics, you're going to use Wild Growth. 
Then after that, if you're Star Surge Prox, then you're going to use Star's Fire again. And then you're going to cast Star Fire again before your Solar Eclipse charges deplete. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to cast Wrath and you're going to use Wild Growth for probably 90% of your healing. If you really need to heal somebody badly like the tank or whatnot, you can always use your Nature Swiftness uh, into your Healing Touch. Also take into account here that your Healing Touch at rank 4 is going to be 2.5 seconds, whereas your rank 5 and above is going to be 3 seconds. And that's pretty much it. If you guys like the video, please go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, etc. If you want to find me in the comments below, I'd be more than happy to give you a good duke around. Besides that, you guys have a great day. Bye-bye. talenting in improved starfire and in addition to that you're going to have it reduced by another 0.5 so it's going to be a 2.5 second cast so it's way way better um, it is still going to be casting time however just keep that in mind uh, but then if you do get into immune fury uh, you're going to be doing a lot more damage with it as well um, now you are going to be, be now you are going to be wanting to put star surge on cooldown cost you no mana just keep putting that up, and then your Moonfire, same thing. You want to just put it on cooldown. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you have any comments for me below, please go ahead, leave them, and I'd be more than happy to debate or talk to you about that. All right, that's it. Peace out for now. Bye-bye.